this is uh, episode 4 of Shadowrun Dragon Force. <coughs> so you're a dystopia, eh? The late Monica Schaefer's replacement. He looks you up and down, then nods. <coughs> Good, you looked apart. Let, uh, let me get right to, to business. My organization would like to retain your services for the indefinite future. But first, we're asking you to go on a trial run, an audition of sorts, to prove that you're the right man for the job. Assuming that you complete this trial to your satisfaction, I will then offer you a variety of simple tasks. All of these should be achievable in the course of your everyday business. You won't need to go out of your way to expose yourself to much unnecessary risk. For each task that you complete, you will be rewarded handsomely, and there will be a bonus if you finish them all. <coughs> so have a picked your interest. Will you accept our offer? Who do you work for? How did uh, you know where to find me? My organization knows everything worth knowing in Berlin, in Germany, including this small pond that is Berlin. <coughs> it is in our best interest, however, to remain unknown to the world at large. For the time being, that is all you need to know. What does this audition pay? I can offer you 1500 yen, but only if you complete the full audition, the run and post-run interview to our satisfaction. If you fail to perform to up to our expectation, you will receive no pay and no further offers of work. So, very good. <coughs> Assuming that your performance is in the audition passes muster, I can foresee a long and fruitful business relationship between us. Sure, I mean... <coughs> good, he smiles. Very good. Now on to the task. There is a man named Alice here. He is a senior manager of the Hermes Eurocom and a respected figure in his community. My organization also suspects him of working with pro-corporate extremists. These people are actively working to undermine the flux state and pave the way for a corporate-controlled Berlin. <coughs> My organization has no more desire to see Berlin fall to the corporations than you do. However, we are hesitant to act on our suspicion without proof. This is where you come in. Keep talking. You will meet with a team that I've arranged for you, and with their assistance, you will plant surveillance devices in this apartment. Take the U-Bahn to Frankfurt Tour and go along. The rest of your team will meet you there. <coughs> Hang on a second, I already have a team. You do, yes, but they are unsuitable for this job. Remember, this is the test of your abilities, not the eagers or glorious of Dietrichs. If it's that important to you, I'll work with your team. <coughs> Very good. The moment that you board the train to Frankfurt Tour, your test will begin. I would advise you to bring what you need in terms of medical supplies and ordnance. Once you embark on your trial run, there will be no turning back. After you have planted the devices and verified that they work, come back to me. There will be a brief interview, a post-mortem on the run, if you like, and assuming that I am satisfied with what I hear, I will pay you your first stipend. Then we will discuss our future options. Best of luck, Dystopia. We will be watching. <laughs> Travel to Frankfurt tour to meet Luca Dewar's team. <coughs> Trial run. As the U-Bahn helms towards Frankfurt Tour, you tug idly at the fabric of your maintenance uh, uniform. You found it in a duffel bag on your seat when you boarded, along with the note from Dewar to put it on before you arrive. The moment you step off this train, the note said, your trial run begins. You are to rendezvous with the rest of the team, reconnoiter the building and plant the specific devices in Alishar's suite. Beyond that, <coughs> your approach will be left to you. Do not disappoint us, you are being watched. As you emerge from the dinghy, confines of the U-Bahn terminal, and step into the light of day, you find yourself confronted by a wall of muscle in a knight-errant uniform. You're with maintenance. If it isn't a question, he stands impassively, waiting for a response. Yes, sir. Have you seen any other maintenance guys around here? 
Yeah, they've been trickling in over the last 15 minutes or so. I've already done a security check on your entire crew. Everything checked out. So you're good to head into the building whenever you want. Thanks for your time. <coughs> he nods at you. Have a good one. Looks up to you and looks up at you, wide eyed with apprehension. From the way that she's fidgeting, you can tell that she's terrified. She bites her lip, eyes darting from side to side. Finally, she takes a step towards you. Uh, hello, are you Mr. Dystopian? I take it you're my maintenance crew. Yeah, uh, yeah, I am. My name is Jenna. She tries uh, on a smile, it falls all away almost immediately. <coughs> Okay, where are the other two? I was told that there would be four of us. They uh, they sort of jumped the gun a little. They're already inside. Well, I guess I can't fault their enthusiasm. The dwarf rings her hand. I'm sorry, I told them to wait, but they didn't listen. They just muscled on past me and waltzed through the door. <coughs> Alright, come down. I say that you have a toolbox or a rigger or something. She swallows. Well, um, no, I'm not like you. Not like the others. You should probably know that. And what are you like? A normal person with a boyfriend and a cat in a shitty apartment. I'm not a career criminal, is what I'm saying. I'm just an electrician. If you're not a shadow on what are you doing on this crew? Her face flushes red. I'd rather not talk about it. Let's just say that someone did me a favor once and that coming along on this thing is how I have to pay them back. <laughs> Look, in the end, it doesn't matter. <sighs> I have to be on this run, and you have to bring me along. It's what they want. Well, I'll try to get you through this uh, safely, but I can't make any promises. She nods eagerly. Thank you. I really, really mean that. No problem. <clears throat> now you said that our teammates are already inside. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I watched them storm through the front doors of the building and that were going to hit about 10 minutes ago. Well, they're eager. I give them that much. They can't have gotten too far ahead of us. Without my help, they won't be able to make it off the first floor. How do you know that? <coughs> no one's getting upstairs until I bypassed the security locks on the elevator. That's why I decided to wait for you out here. I figured that they couldn't get themselves in too much trouble if I didn't come with them. Alright, let's get in there before the others blow the run. <coughs> yeah, okay, let's do it. A mid-level corporate compound, complete with living spaces on the upper level. steps forward to greet you and drink menu in your hand. Welcome to Caf Shack, how, how, home of the budget-friendly caffeine fix. May I help you? What do you have? We've got the cheapest soy cafe in Berlin, guaranteed. But of course, for hard-working folks like yourself, we do have other options. Options that corporate security doesn't tend to appreciate very much. Productive enhancers. Get the picture. There's nothing I love better than enhanced productivity. What are you offering? <coughs> She smiles slightly. I've got just the thing for that big presentation or that make or break annual report. It's called Yolt and it's amazing. Show it. <sighs> Drug dealing waitress. Step through the door, you find yourself confronted by a pair of men wearing the same kind of uniform that you are. Judging by their expression, there is no love lost between the two. Hearing the door swing open, they turn to face you. A shorter of the two, a human with arcane symbols, tastefully embossed on his belt, glares at you. You're here, finally, and you brought our little mouse of an electrician with you. 
Better late than never, but not too much better. You're tardy enough as it is. <coughs> he jerks his thumb as the elf, at the elf standing beside him. I leave it to you to keep our pack mule in line. The elf's lips curls into a snarl. Hanging from his back is a bulging pack that looks incredibly heavy. His broad shoulders under the weight his broad shoulders sag under the weight of whatever is inside. His dumb is opposed, but he can lift heavy things. Might not be bad in a fight either. At the very least, he can soak up a few bullets for the rest of us. Staring daggers at the mage, he spits out a long string of foreign words in a single, susurrant breath. The sound of it is lovely, but his expression leaves little doubt that the message behind the words is an ugly one. <coughs> oh, I, and I hope that you can speak Sveretiel. He shakes his head in disgust. Damned useless immigrants. Do us all a favor and keep your opinions to yourself. The corner of his mouth lives into the ugly smirk. You may be the leader of this team, but I'll speak my mind whenever I please. Get used to it. Oh, and by the way, think you could have gotten here any later, pal? I've got an important meeting to get to, and if I'm late, the shit is going to hit the... This isn't getting us to your meeting any faster. He flashes a hateful glance at the dwarf, then turns his attention back to you. No, it isn't. So let's get to the penthouse and plant the cameras. I'll mask them against detection, and then we can all go our separate ways. The elf mutters something under his breath and hitches the bulky backpack up a little higher on his back. His muscles budge under the strain of it. That pack looks heavy. I can help you with it if you want. The elf blinks uncomprehendingly and takes a half step back. I told you, he can't understand a word you're saying. Nothing comes uh, out of his mouth but that pigeon drivel that the elves call a language. A ter tear turn gear dialect, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> I wish that he'd do us all a favor and go back. Address the elf, can you understand me at all? The musical tone of the elvish tongue pour out of his mouth again, but you can't make out the word. His dialect is quite foreign. It's unlike the form of Sver Sveretiel spoken by the elves of Tir Nanog. The elf falls silence. He looks just as frustrated as the mages. Just relax and concentrate on the job. <coughs> Your words don't seem to have much impact. The elf scowls deepens. I get the distinct impression that none of you actually want to be here. But we've got a job to do, so you're all gonna have to suck it up and deal. The mage leers at you. Wonderful pep talk. Really, really magnificent. I can see why you were placed in charge of this run. Now can we please get along, get a moving? I don't have all day. We know, we know, you have a meeting. I can get us into Alishar's apartment, but there are a few things that we'll need to do first. If you can get me to a building access panel that's on the same circuit as the penthouse, I should be able to put its security systems into maintenance mode. <coughs> the job will take some <coughs> creative re rewiring. Well, that and whatever it, whatever's in that pack that the elf is carrying, our employers gave me the schematics. And do you know where we'll find that access panel, Mouse? Quit calling me that. She takes a moment to calm herself. And yes, I do. There's an access panel in one of the mid-range apartments on the same floor. My contact gave me a key, <coughs> a key code that should get us in. <coughs> You've said should <coughs> twice already. That makes me feel uneasy. Well, there's nothing that I can do about it. It's the plan that I was given and we're stuck with it. Unless you have a better idea, we'll just have to follow our instructions and hope for the best. She turns to face you. <coughs> Get me to a building access terminal on this floor and I can rewire the elevator. That's the first thing that we need to do. Once we're upstairs, we can use the code I was given. Rewire Alishar's sy security system and we, hit the and we hide the cameras in the apartment. <coughs> Her brow for us. Well, that's the theory anyways. Alright then, let's go. Jenna studies the junction box for a moment, then turns to you. See that guard in the hallway? Well, he was standing next to the junction box. Looks like, just like this one. Looks like they're both on the same circuit too. <coughs> so? So I can use this one to overload the one that the guard is standing by. She looks at the junction box again and nods. Yeah, I could feed a nice power spike into that one from here. You know, if you wanted me to. 
Leave it alone, Yano. We'll find another way. <clears throat> Welcome to Dunkley's Fine Clothiers. Are you shopping for a suit? Let me see that suit. Ah, good choice. Style and safety. You have a good eye. She takes your arm. Here, let me show you to the dressing room. Ballistic closet suit. The guard's stance shifts slightly as you approach. Can I help you? Yeah, could you open the door to the utility area? We have some work to do in there. You can't read the guard's expression through his mirrored mask, but his body language makes it clear that he's staring at you. This door is security coded, Delta Gray. Your ID says that you're just a Theta, so no, I can't open the door. You're not listening, we have work to do in there. I heard him loud and clear, mob jockey. Now, you listen to me. Nobody without Delta clearance gets through the door, period. I suggest you talk to management if you really do need to be in there. They'll upgrade your clearance, otherwise, piss off. Cool down, we're on the same side here. This is a dispatch problem, I'm sure of it. I don't envy you guys having to work with them all every day. <coughs> the guard shoulders relax. Yeah, I hear you, I swear. It's amazing that anyone get anyone done anything done at all around here. Tell you what, you don't need to go all the way back to main management. Just call in and get your clearance changed. I'll let you guys in as soon as the authorization come through. Now I'd better go take care of this in person, but the one thing before I go. Instead of this week's protocol, they sent us out with last week's. Anything changed since then? He shakes his head. Unbelievable. You know, it makes my blood boil. To think of how much <coughs> money they make. It's people like you and me that actually keep this place running. And yet the idiots at the dispatch pull in triple what we do for sitting on their asses and fouling everything up. Right there with you, man. Now about those protocols. Yeah, let's see. They changed the emergency assistance code from November to Indigo. I think that's it. Everything else should be the same as from last week. Indigo, yeah, thanks. Now I'd better head back to management to get that clearance issue sorted. He nods sag sagely. Best of luck, pal. Do us all a favor and call out those idiots at dispatch. Not that they'll do any good. On second thought, don't bother saying anything. They just wind up getting another raise. Don't I know it. Take care of yourself. Yeah, you too. <coughs> A well-groomed corporate couple stand in the corner, browing racks of pamphlet <coughs> about neural enhancement headwear. The woman's head turns at the sound of your approach. Upon seeing your uniform, her nose, nose wrinkles. Oh, hello. Are we in your way? We wouldn't want to keep you from your work. A spray-tanned husband chimes in. Right. The last thing we'd want is to come between you people and whatever it is that you do. <coughs> Everything is fine, we're just doing routine maintenance check. Ah well, don't let us get in your way. You're not in the way at all. Say, what are you looking at there? This, he holds up a display model that they were inspecting so that you can see it. A small chip along with a glossy, attractive information sheet. It's a pediatric skill wire plus system for our son. <coughs> our little Hans deserves the very best and he'll need it if he's going to compete with his classmates at the academy. That means headwear from Augmentech. We may not be as rich as the other parents, but this at least is something that we can do. <clears throat> this stuff is not cheap. You must be very devoted parents. I like to think that we are, and no, it isn't cheap, but unfortunately, these sort of enhancements have become nearly mandatory at top tier schools like the academy. Our son's classmates come from uh, affluent uh, families. Even the least successful of Hans Pierce has a pediatric encephalon, and it ranges on up from there. The academy grades on a curve. If we were to send Hans to school without any enhancement, we'd be setting him up for failure. What about the kids that can't afford cyber surgery? The scholarship students, you mean? He pauses considering. Well, suppose that someone has to be at the bottom of the pile. Yes, but that someone won't be our hands. It's an unfortunate situation, of course. He cocks <coughs> his head apologetically. 
But then, that's the world we live in, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You wouldn't want Hans to wind up at the bottom of the heap like me. I should say not. You seem like a good man, and I don't mean to insult you, but you know how cutthroat it is out there. Hans will have every advantage, even if I have to mortgage, mortgage the house to provide it for him. That's big of you. I should get back to work. <coughs> the woman behind the counter smiles at you, her cheeks dimpling. Good afternoon and welcome to the Oldman Tech, the boutique that makes a better you of you. Her voice is overflowing with forceful, forced cheerfulness. Idly, you wonder how many times she has to give this exact speech every day. Tell me, how can I help you today? I might be in the market for some cyberware. Then you come to the right place. She gestures at the terminal in front of you. Please feel free to browse our catalog. We have a huge stock of performance enhancing augmentations to make you the, into the person you always dreamed you could be. Look at the catalog terminal. Scanning over the tastefully designed catalog, you find that most of Augmentech's stock consists of overpriced cosmetics or cyberware, metabolic tweaks <coughs> to help burn away cellulite, uh, ruthenium polymer hair extensions, ultra expensive leon leonization treatments aimed at wealthy septuagenarians. What the fuck is, is with all these words today? Toward the back of the catalog, you find some more practical chrome, but nothing that a Shadowrun would want. From design replacement limbs to nephretic uh, screens for alcoholics, Augmentech carries the very best in fashionable implants for ultra-rich. <coughs> the mental enhancement section is a little more promising, but you don't see anything that you could, couldn't already find in the crossbazaar. You're about to turn away when an ad on the last page grabs your attention. The newest iteration of the Encephalon system completed with an integrated matte SPU. The Encephalon Next, as it's called, <coughs> is bleeding-edge commercial great tech. Non-compete non agreements prevent it from being sold at most stores, but you found one that carries it. Hey, this headwear looks interesting. Mind if I take a look? She glanced at the item on the screen. Looking at the new Encephalon, huh? Good choice. Our regional supervisor has one, and it's amazing. Totally worth the price. And what is the price? It doesn't say on this screen. We're doing a special right now. Yours from 250. That's actually really cheap. Okay, sign me up. That's uh, wonderful. Good choice. I'll just swipe your credit stick, then I'll print up your purchase order. Okay, where do I get it installed? Is your dock in the back or something? <coughs> Brothers. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that you don't understand. We're a boutique shop, not a cyber surgery clinic. We can sell you the device and have it sent to the clinic of your choice for installation, but we don't do the surgery here. Of course, your doctor will bill you separately for installation, but this way, you can ensure that the pro procedure is carried out wherever you're most comfortable. I'll still take it. Please have it sent to the Triage Cyber Clinic in Krauspasar. She swipes your credit stick and punches a few buttons on the PDA. A flimsy slip of paper <coughs> spills out of the terminal you are standing at and into your hand. A saleswoman beams at you. You are now, you are now the proud owner of an Encephalon Next. We'll have it sent to your Triage Cyber Clinic as per your request. When you arrive, just show the doctor or a member of his staff the proof of purchase that you're holding, and we'll and he'll know what to fetch for you. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Have a great day. The guard steps forward, interposing himself between you and the terminal. Your security clearance does not authorize you to be here. <coughs> We're doing a building-wide maintenance sweep of all major systems. Want us to take a look at your terminal? You know that I can't do that. You don't have the appropriate clearance to touch this terminal, let alone service it. Besides, it's been running great since that other maintenance team worked on it last week. I'm surprised that you don't have that in your records. <coughs> You know how it is with us and management. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. It's ridiculous. Story of my life. You have my sympathies. Your buddy across the way wanted me to give me a message. A status indigo com compromised. Does that mean anything to you? The guard jerks upright in alarm. He said what? Step out of my way please. 
Enter the false data into the system to indicate threats coming from a far part of the complex away from the target. A few responses fl codes flash on the screen. <coughs> Take food shelves. The sign out front advertises a variety of local source foodstuffs, all of them terribly overpriced. Take a closer look at the food on offer. <coughs> Dancing in the self serve refrigerated section of the kiosk, uh, you found a variety of sandwiches wrapped in slick plastic. You can eat for a week for the price of one of these things. Subway. You there, maintenance guy. Stop right where you are. Is there a problem? The demonstrator is. You lied to me. Nobody called the code Indigo. And when dispatch took a closer look at your work orders, they found that they were fakes. You're all coming with us. The major's hands ignite with arcane energy. His mouth curls into an ugly smile. This is the end of the line for you, boys. Bad luck. Hold on, everyone. We can still talk this out. <coughs> Yana begins to stammer out an, agre an agreement. Her eyes widen. Yeah, we don't want any trouble. The guards jerk their weapons out of their holster and turn to fire. Wordlessly, Jenna pops uh, an access panel at the base of the terminal and begins snipping wires. A few minutes later, she replaces the panel's cover and stands. Alright, that should do it. I bypassed the security lock on the elevator. We're good to head upstairs. That was quick. I know my way around electrical systems. My father used to own uh, rental properties all over M Munich and I helped him maintain them. She smiles shyly. I've been rewiring buildings since I was a little girl. Touching. I don't know what this has to do with getting me to my meeting, but please. By all means, keep walking down memory lane. We'll wait. I couldn't care less about your meeting, James, but we should keep moving all the same. James turns and stalks towards the doorway. The others follow behind. <coughs> to get me to this floor's access panel. They'll be in room 303 on this floor. The door combination, 14291. She glances up at you. Make sure to write that down. <coughs> yeah, I got it. Okay, once I'm there, I can put the penthouse door in maintenance mode. They'll set its key code combination to 111111 so we shouldn't have any trouble getting in to plant the camp. James cuts her off. We're already wasting too much time. If we don't pick up the pace, I'm not going... I'm going to be late to my meeting and I cannot afford that. He points at you. You're gonna have to get us moving faster, jackass. No more unnecessary delays and no more long speeches. You're in no position to dictate terms. Our employers put me in charge of this team, remember? The mage's uh, lip curls into a sneer. In f a fact that I'm painfully aware of. <coughs> if I weren't under instruction to follow your lead, this would be a very different uh, conversation. Yeah, well, you are, so shut up and deal with it. She shakes her head in disgust. God, I wish that we didn't need, need you to finish this job. His lips curls into a sneer. Sadly for all of us, you do. Oh, and by the way, we're going to have words when this run is over, Mouse. A stream of caustic syllables pours out of the elf's mouth. His back is stooped under the weight of his pack, but his hands have clenched into fists. He rolls his eyes and points a bony finger at the elf. Look, it's trying to speak. I want to get this over with, Dystopia. I want to get away from these people and go home. From around the corner, you hear a sound. Heavy boots on tile, moving toward you at the full run. Oh no.
to keep that. I need to set the maintenance mode or whatever is it. Okay, so let's see here. Fourteen two nine one. <coughs> Fourteen two nine one. Oh three oh three. Welcome home. <laughs> Moving the painting aside, you find the large maintenance access panel. Jenna steps forward, a slight frown on her face. Okay, I guess that this is me. <coughs> she pulls up a multi-tool from her belt and uses it to loosen the bolts that hold the panel in place. Pulling up schematic on her PDA, she examines the terminal's wiring. Hurry it up, woman. The clock is ticking. Don't rush me. This is complicated. Popping the lid on her toolbox, she grabs a pair of wire clippers, a soldering gun, and a roll of electrical tape. With a look of grim determination on her face, she begins to snip into a massive harness of cables that runs through the unit. <laughs> Alright, she taps the elf on the knee. I'm gonna need that thing now. <coughs> he nods and reaches back to unsling his pack. Placing it on the floor, he opens it and pulls out a large blue canister. It takes all of his strength to wrestle it up from the ground and into the space on the, in the access panel that Janna has cleared. There you go, you dumb ox. Do something useful for a change. The elf says nothing. I'm burdening, unburdened by the heavy pack. He stands up straight and for the first time... <coughs> you appreciate how much larger he is than the corporate mage. He stares down at James, and his hands bunch into fists. Stay cool, man. We're almost done. <coughs> if the elf understands you, he shows no sign of it. <coughs> he continues to stare James down, and the mage continues to ignore him. <coughs> Payload in place. Jaina goes back to work. It only takes a few minutes for her to screw, wire, <coughs> and solder the canister into harness. Into the harness. She inspects her work, nods, and turns to face you. She stands and brushes the hair out of her eyes. Alright, job's done. Just need to do a bit of cleanup and we can get out of here. Nice job, Jana. Yeah, thanks. It wasn't all that difficult, just a matter of following our employer's instructions. Hey, that's great, but times are ticking, so let's keep moving. He glances at the jumble of wires and circuitry through the open access panel. To hell with the cleanup. We'll uh, be gone before anyone notices anything anyway. You sure that whatever you did disarmed the security system? <laughs> Not really. I have no idea what that canister was or what it's supposed to do. Our employer told me that I had to wire it into the wall at this junction, so I did. That's all I know. <coughs> Our employers don't tell us much, do they? You haven't been doing this long, have you? The lodge doesn't tell you things that you don't need to know and you don't ask. Your job is to do what uh, they tell you. Take the money and keep your mouth shut about it afterwards. It's all that simple. The lodge? The major's eyes widen in incredulously. You don't even know who you're working for, do you? <coughs> you're leading this team and you don't have a clue. Jenna cuts in. Her eyes widen. Both of you, shut up. Somebody's coming. A tall, deeply tanned man rounds the corner at a jog and comes bustling into the room. You recognize him as the father at the, that you spoke with at the Augment Tech Shosk. He <coughs> stops short when he sees your team, and the smile falls from his face. You, the guy from the Cyberware Shosk. What the hell is going on here? He advances at you, full buster and bravado. This is my apartment. I own it. You can't just waltz in here and start pulling the walls apart without my consent. We're maintenance, look at the uniforms. Yeah, I say that, but that doesn't give you the right to force your way into my home and start tearing up my walls. At the very least, you should have given me advance notice. James shoots an irritated glance. This is the waste of time, and I'm already running late. If you don't ca take care of this idiot, I will. The elf 
borks something out at James. The sound is uncharacteristically ugly. All harsh consonants and sib sibilant hisses. Let's keep calm everyone, this is a simple misunderstanding. <coughs> misunderstanding my ass. Your friend just called me an idiot in my own home. He wheels on James, his hands balled into fists. I want to know your employer's number and I want to know it now. The maid raises an eyebrow, smiling. Do you know? I'm a member of the homeowners association for this level. You know what uh, that means? I have a lot of pool with building management. He trusts an outstretched finger at James. Your days wearing that uniform are number, I promise you that. Calm down, sir. There must be a problem at dispatch. You should have received our work order last week. I didn't receive a thing from dispatch, or from anyone else for that matter. My wife and I are entertaining guests here in an hour and a half, and our living room is ruined. I need to know that you're going to fix this, and that you'll clean the place back up. And that you'll put a new coat of wax on the floors. I need... The hell with it. I don't have time for this. His hands twist into claws, and he raises them high in instant ladder. An instant later, they are wreathed in an unnatural purple glow. James, stand down. We do not need to kill this man. The glow intensifies into a scintillating torrent of light. The energy lances and stabs out at James' hooked fingers as if it were alive. The man in the doorway recoils in alarm and his palm slaps down on a plastic disc that has been clipped to his belt. Too late, you recognize the object. A panic button. No alarm sounds. Nothing happened. <coughs> the homeowner backpedals. Trying to put the wood between himself and James. He's moving too slowly. Much too slowly. Everybody, stand down. Your words are met with an incomprehensible screech. In your peripheral vision, you catch a flurry of motion. Your elvish companion is moving, making a beeline towards James. Jaina is hanging off of him trying to slow him down, but he barely seems to notice. With a kick, he sends her tumbling to the ground, then reaches for his weapon. Stop, damn it! We need him alive to complete the run. With a kick, he sends her tumbling to the ground, then turns back towards James. <sighs> Step between the elf and James. I hate the bastard too, but Jenna's right. We need him. Devs comes up short, staring at you. He sweeps his vision from you to Jaina to James. Then he exhales heavily and spits out a jumble of broken German. Killers, innocents of will not stand for, I not slave. All lodgemen, bastards, kill all. Fucking mess. <clears throat> A slick high grade keypad is the mountain into the door frame. Use the keypad. One, 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 one. Maintenance override accepted. <clears throat> Place the first camera, it adheres to the ceiling with an aud audible click. James steps forward, his fingers bent. He whispers a long string of hushed syllables that seem to vibrate in your mind. For a moment, nothing seems to happen. Then you blink and the camera is gone. Done, get moving on the next one. <coughs> The second camera clicks into a heating vent. The lens irises to adjust to the light. James re repeats his previous performance and the camera fades from you. You place the last camera. James steps forward and turns to stare you in the eye. 
When we get through with this run, I'm gonna tell my handlers all about you. You won't work for a lodge again. Not because you're an incompetent leader, but because I have pull. And I don't like you very much. What do you have to say about that? <coughs> you can do whatever you want when we're done with this. For now, shut your mouth and finish the job. That infuriating smirk returns to his face. I will. He whispers to the third camera, and soon enough, it fades from you. L that's it. We're done. Let's go. <coughs> you get stuck on everything. <laughs> If you can open the others with the one 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 now or so. Nope. <coughs> oh Jesus. Two guards. Jason two grenades. Come on now.
damage. Mission accomplished. Fucking finally. Call your hand and tell him the job is done. And be quick about it. I need to be on the next train out of here. For once, he and I are in agreement. I can't put this place behind me quick enough. All I want to do is go home. Hug my cat and forget that night... That tonight ever happened. Enter the com code that Luca Dura gave you. You punch Luca Dura's com code into your PDA. A few seconds later, you hear a telltale click of a successful connection. Dura's voice pours out of your PDA speaker. Just open it. Job is done, I trust. Yes, everything has been completed to your specifications. Very good. Now, you, now if you please, give me a status update on the members of your team. The elf from Tyr Tangier turned on us. We had to put him down, but Jan and James are both alive and well. He clucks his tongue softly. Interesting. That the elf is dead was expected. He was a dangerous and unreasonable person. Disgruntled, you might say, after years of service in our employ. His betrayal of you was inevitable. Thankfully, with his death, we have gained valuable insight into your character. James' continued survival, on the other hand, was not expected. You are a very patient man, Dystopia. Dura smiles. This has been most informative. James' posture stiffens, but he says nothing. You can see a dawning awareness behind his eyes, though. Slowly, the color begins to drain from his face. <coughs> now let us uh, see how adequately you completed the task that I set before you. Enter the following code into your PDA, if you please. 5256719. Punch the code into your PDA. The type in... You type in the code as instructed, and your PDA screen cuts to static. A moment later, a familiar image materializes in the screen. The penthouse room that you bug, it appears to be a live feed from the cameras that you planted. You're sure that this room is secure? You've done a full sweep? Absolutely, sir. We've run multiple sweeps with a complete sensor package, and we brought in a mage to search for a signal of astral tampering. It's all, it all checks out clean. <coughs> You're completely safe in here. It lets out the heavy sigh. Thank God. <laughs> Call downstairs and let my wife and kid know that it's safe to come up. Will do, sir. Uh, is there anything else that I can do for you tonight? No, thank you. That will be all. You have a good... Suddenly, the air in the room seems to ignite. There is a blinding flash and your PDA screen cuts to static. Yeah, I'm not exactly surprised. <coughs> and that takes care of that. Please return to the Krauss Bazaar. The reminder of your post-run interview will conclude upon your arrival. Hang on, what the hell was that? Here is now, what did it feel like? An explosion, of course. You lied to me, doer. I told you that you would be planting bugs, and you did plant bugs. You did a wonderful job, if I may add. Jana's job was to plant the bomb, but we can discuss all of this upon your return. Yana covers her mouth with her hand, a horrified uh, expression on her face. Oh god, I killed someone. That man is dead because of me. From the sound of that explosion, I guess that you killed a fair number of someone, sir. Elisher and his bodyguard at the very least, and probably a good half dozen more. A morbid grin creases the mage's thin lips, lips mouth. That makes you a mass murderer, mouse. You're moving up in the world. 
A sob racks her chest. She begins to hyperventilate. I can never get away from this. This is going to follow me for the rest of my life. I killed people. I'm a fucking murderer. Say it louder. Why don't you? I don't think they heard you in France. I haven't heard a response from you, Dystopia. Shall I make the preparation for your post-run interview? Are you ready to continue the test? I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this, Dur. I'll see you soon. Very good. I'll be waiting. <clears throat> Your return trip to the Cross Bazaar is a quiet one. The train for the Frankfurt tour is empty, save for you. There's nothing to distract you from your thoughts. You are finished with the first part of your audition. Lucadur is waiting at Café Selsves to administer the second. Welcome back, and my congratulations on a job well done. If you wanted Alisher dead, you could have just said so. I had, uh, I'd have taken the job either way. You don't thoughtfully. Good to know. But the purpose of this test is to gauge your adaptability. We need to know that you'll be willing to do what we tell you to do, regardless of your personal feelings on the matter. And we need to know that you'll uh, roll with the punches if circumstances change mid-run. <coughs> Many of your colleagues in the shadow community have overinflated egos. They let their personal feelings interfere with their work. My organization needs to know that you will see tasks that we assign you through, no matter what. Say nothing. <coughs> the true purpose of the run that, run that you just went on was to test your willingness to adapt to change. You are still being tested, by the way. If you work for my organization, you will be asked to do things that you find morally troubling sometimes. It might even appear that we're lying to you, but you can take comfort in knowing that everything that we request of you is ultimately for the greater good. And what is this greater good? Define it for me. <coughs> you can't see the big picture. I can't either. I am, again, just a mouthpiece. The only ones who know my organization's ultimate ends are its ruling council, and they aren't in the practice of sharing information with their hirelings. But know that they are some of the most intelligent men on this planet, and they place a high priority on social order and stability. And those are good things by anyone's standard. Hysterci and I, what do you think of all that? I don't like being kept in the dark, but if you pay as well as you say you do, I can overlook it. After a brief pause, he nods, then reaches forward and places a credit stick into your hand. Congratulations, you've passed your audition. Welcome to the payroll. So what happens now? Now we part ways. Don't worry, I'll call you when, the, when your services are needed. He taps a neatly trimmed fingernail against the earpiece of his comlink. When I contact you with a new task, the choice of whether to take it or leave it will be yours. If you take it, return here and I'll pay you a fair sum for your services. If you leave it, well, there are, there are some in my organization that would be quite unhappy. <clears throat> good to know. I suppose that I'll be waiting to hear from you then. Very good. I'll be in touch. Get the drone fix it? I do, just finished before you arrived. There's a complication though. What is it? This drone's got a custom 
AIOS stack on it. Someone wrote code that sits on the boatloader and configures the drone to only accept commands from a specific user. The thing works like a computer virus, so there's no way I can rip it out unless I got another brain from this model of drone. Before you ask, yes, I looked into that. Problem is, this is a stolen corp drone. A discontinued model of a stolen corp drone. There are no parts for this thing on the market around here. So unless you know who locked this thing up so tightly, you're not going to get more out use out of it than a store stop. Thanks for your time, Melit. Hey, no problem. It was a fun project. Assemble the team and travel to form a laboratory complex to eliminate the loose ends from your client's botched run. client has hired you to tie up loose ends at the site of a botched cloak and dagger operation. One of the operatives from the failed mission has been captured by night errant security forces and it's only a matter of time before he talks. Your job is simple. Kick in the door, find the operative and put a bullet in his guts before he can spill them. So it's been three karma, yeah, that's not a lot. The reception area of the Sharing Pharma AG lab looks normal enough. The synth leather couches were obviously designed more for appearance than for comfort, and the blue steel walls are gently illuminated with energy efficient recess, recessed lighting. <coughs> all in all, it's a perfect example of typical corporate design sensibility bland, generic, and safe. An overturned houseplant is the only sign that something might be amiss in the lab. You ready for this boss? According to what Terry Fox told, told us, this entire complex is going to be crawling with hired security. It's going to be a hell of a fight. We can handle it. Get ready people. We're back, intruders. Fuck you and all your grenades.
Wait for it. Kill an enemy with damage over time. Not so easy to aim those uh, those thingies. Hello. Minus ten per round, jeez. Could he hit me if I can't hit him? Uh, well, okay.
serviços. Was that it? All that for uh, security camera. Okay. Or all the security cameras, yes. Okay, so I can see where everyone is.
shit, look at that, what happened there? Yeah, that's a good question. Ninety-nine percent. Good job. Good job. We need backup in the main lab now. So bad the hit rate. The body of the table looks like a janitor. His chest and stomach appears to have been brutally torn open. <coughs> Grizzly scene. 
The body on the operating table has been torn to pieces. The dual arms of an auto surgeon are obviously holding. A sec, I'm gonna go make some more coffee. from the elevators.
Get your move controlling to the turrets. Overload power turrets. Follow corpses, the bodies are all dressed in high quality ballistic armor. Alpha team, be advised, we've lost control of the situation. Too late, they're here. Fast response, team inbound. Hold until reinforcements arrive. They're the only thing she does, I hear her very shit at shooting. <laughs> I like how even when I miss I actually hit. Why does it have that as a toy?
that much HP. That's good. Nice that you can just snipe these back.
to the control. From the description that your client gave you, this must be your target, the rigger, Thorwald Enstad. You can see him waving his waving and pounding on the plastic of his cell door, but for where you're standing, this scene is eerily silent. He looks like he's had a rough go of things. One of his eyes has been blackened, and his lower lip is split wide open. Not particularly surprising, given the temperament of his captors. <coughs> the only incongruous element of his outfit is decked out, had head to toe in patched black riding leathers. A pair of oversized studded combat boots shine in the halogen glare of the cell's lighting, apart, lighting panels. From his style of dress, it's obvious that this dwarf is not a corporate employee, he's a shadow runner. This isn't some corporate goon, boss, look at him, he's one of us. Glory shudders, but holds her silence. Dietrich lays a hand on the bare metal of Glory's shoulder. She flinches, but only barely. When he speaks, his voice is soft. There, but for the grace of God, a eh, love. Glory's eyes remain fixed on Rigger, who continues to hammer impotently on the door of his cell. Something like that. <laughs> Indeed, I took the job. He did. But I could also use a rigger on my crew. All AP lost. It's a bit rude. Did I miss something in the hacking place? I'll have to go back and check what the fuck. The fuck! No, the hacking is gone. Oh, 
apocalypse. Yeah, I'm everywhere is locked. Yeah, but there's no, like, talking thing. I'm not getting up anything that I can talk to him at all. So... Yeah. There's no controls to open the door, there's no... Uh, Feels like it's bugged out. I'd say blues ends. Yeah, it's probably a bug. It was in the first game a bug here, a uh, bug in the, yeah, uh, at one mission as well, where in the last mission where the bugs tear down the wall so you can go forward. Uh, the third bug that tears down the important wall didn't spawn, so I had to like redo that mission. <coughs> I mean, it's in the indie developers oh shit that's the wrong save auto save this one Something serious is wrong with the game right now. Let's just restart it. No, is it from the beginning? Grug. Grug, grug. <clears throat> no, it's 
from this floor. Yeah, that's good at least. That's why it's bugging out, because there are like dudes on the previous floor. The combat doesn't end, because there are dudes that I can't reach on the first floor. And I can't get up there again. Ugh! Unfortunately shit like this happens with indie games. <sighs> I was too fast in killing the first floor and going downstairs I guess.
Nate holds up. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Yeah, it's a bit bad programming there.
let's uh, do a save here. Don't have to See there. Open the basilisk cage. <coughs> Tons of reinforcements went down when I released the basilisk. I think. <coughs> Yeah, I guess I shouldn't have left the best list so.
straight away. Great success. Amazing. Jesus Christ, she's missing a lot of money.
Thanks for keeping my head down till I till the lead stops. Lead stops. The door slides open and the stench of stale sweat assaults your nostrils. Enstad steps forward, his bloody lips curled into a smile. The soles of his boots squeak on the polished floor. Free at last, thanks Christ. The, his uh, smile widens into a sickly grin. Tar-stained teeth shine wetly in the light. Didn't think I'd warrant a rescue. Whoever sent you, thank him for me. Afraid you're wrong about that. I was sent here to tie up loose ends, namely you. His eyes go wide. He raises his trembling hands in surrender. Well there, chief. Uh, I don't know what your client told you. He said that your team botched a run, went loud too early, and got a lot of people killed. Us. We botched a run. That's bullshit, man. We did everything like we were supposed to, like always. It was that bastard's bad intel that got us hung out to dry. Sounds familiar. Please hear me out. I promise I'll make it worth your while if you do. Glory shrugs. Couldn't hurt to hear what he has to say. His hands clasp in front of him in a sign of supplication. You can see the terror in his eyes. Go ahead, talk. Alright, okay. So we go in, right? Me and my team. And we're doing just what the client told us to. Well, the bastard forgot to <coughs> mention that the pharma had a... Um, Night errant security contract for the place. He told us <coughs> that there would be little, if any, resistance. So he magged our surprise when a KE response team kicked in the door and unloaded on us. Quit trying to shift the blame. Adapting to unanticipated situations is part of the Shadowrunner's job description. Oh, for Christ's sake, what was we supposed to do? Thanks to Fox Bad Intelligence, we left all the heavy ordnance at home. No collateral damage, he told us. Funny how little K.E. seemed to share his concern. Took them all of two seconds before they started lobbing grenades at us. You know where I'm coming from, pal. I can see it in your eyes. You've been on jobs that went south before. The only difference between you and me is that you were lucky enough not to get caught. Look, I can see that you're skeptical. I get that. Can't blame you for it either. You don't know me from Adam. But I know one thing that you will understand. I'd like to offer you a trade. I've got a little toy hidden away. Managed to stash it before those night errand pukes took me. My own design. Totally one of a kind. I call it a pain inducer. Grade A fun for a runner who has everything. And I guarantee that you'll never find another. <coughs> you let me live and it's all yours. I'll put a fucking ribbon on it for you. Then I'll disappear. Never bother any of you again. Scout's honor. Even if. Even if. We'd consider going off mission. She shoots you a significant glare. Which we wouldn't. She turns back to Enstad, staring him down. Did you honestly think that we'd sacrifice our professional integrity and a 15,000 yen payday for a trinket? He nods slowly. 15, huh? I, I can match that. You let me live and I'll pay your wage plus the inducer. Hell, you could even tell your client I'm dead and bill him too. Double your earnings. What do you think about it? How'd you come by the 15 grand? <coughs> I hit the big, big payday a while back. Put extra cash in my rainy day fund. Trust me, pal, I can pay you the money. You help me out and I'll transfer it to you myself. We just need to get back to the room where I stashed my PDA. What does the pain inducer do exactly? It induces pain. It's a narrow band uh, microwave projector. Causes debilitating pain on target. And screws with the electrical systems of drones and the like. Think of it like a taser. Only easier to use and meaner and a whole lot more fun. I mean our contract is to fucking dice him so. Yeah, no dice. Time to die. Elstar's lifeless body lies crumpled on the ground. His mouth is frozen open in silent scream. Good call, Dystopia. He can nods at you. We all knew what uh, we were here to do. Good on you for stepping up and doing it. Yeah, we took the job knowing we were gonna kill him, so yeah, that's what we do. <coughs> the leader of the group is an elf with Asian features. He's obviously a what job. The bands of corded muscle that bulge un out under his sleeves have a distant store-bought look to them. When he speaks, his voice comes out in a gravelly rumble. <laughs> my, my, the intrepid dystopia, with no rigor in sight. I must admit, I am surprised. 
Draw your weapon, back off, way off. You don't intimidate us, Dystopia, even if you manage to kill us. A doubtful proposition at best. You destroy your own reputation in the process. Let me guess, our client sent you. He nods. Her first sent us to check up on you, given his recent trouble with Shadowrunners. This should not come as a surprise. I shall return to him and report your task completed, to my satisfaction. Good day. The subway car is empty on the return trip to the Krausbazaar. This stretch of the bro sprawling u tunnel system doesn't see much use, it seems. <coughs> At least not at this hour. As the train rattles on, you find yourself lost in thought. Old memories creep, unbidden, to the forefront of your mind. Memories of Monica in the old days, and the crew that you used to run with. Memories of success and failure, of wealth and poverty, of good times and bad. Halfway back to the Krausbazaar, you are jolted out of your reverie by a buzzing sound. You're coming, you're receiving a call. Your coming buzzes. A quick glance at the screen tells you that Ansel is on the line. You pick up and his voice fills your ear. Dystopia, I trust I'm catching you at a good time. As good as any. What's up? I've made contact with another prospective client, a rather elusive woman of Atslaner descent. She calls herself Frau Miller. What's the job? She will not say, not to me at any rate. She has insisted that she will speak only with you. She wants to meet you in half an hour time at the location of your choosing. Sounds good to me, I'll meet with her. Very good, I will instruct her to come to the Crows Bazaar. Where would you like to meet? No need for her to wander around, I'll meet her at the u bond station. Note that, I will set up the meeting. Dystopia, there is one other thing, you are shh. Your company cuts to a static. A, woman, a moment later, the light of the u bond car flicker and wink out. You hear the screeching sound of steel on steel, and the train grinds to a halt. Looks like the whole station's lost power. Looks like some squatters are living in this station. Tunnels collapsed, not getting out this way. <coughs> Try you swapping the old fuse that is BTRM to track. The light of the back bathroom go out, the status light next to track remains red. Add an extra fuse to track. You place the extra fuse in the socket next to track. The, li the status light next to track lights up green. Extend the bridge. The mechanical bridge smoothly slides out and expands the gap over the tracks. It's so dark in his maintenance area, you can barely see your hand in front of your face. <coughs> Get your muscle to force the door. Eager shoulder checks the door, and the crack of splintering plastic fills your ears. The door pops open. Reset the breaker box. Oh, hello there. That's them. Open fire. Target acquired.
of the PDA. I mean, all this shit if I actually betrayed my client, but what the fuck? This is just rude. Doesn't look like the train will be going anywhere with the access bridge extended. Retract the bridge. Return to cross basalt. <coughs> the rest of the trip home is uneventful, but one thing is clear someone is hunting you. This ambush was no chance gang warfare, but an organized attempt on your life. If Green Winters was right, then whoever killed them, them is him is now after you. The PDA that you retrieved from your attacker may hold some answers. It's time to return to your safe house and consult Paul Hansen. Okay, time to hit the gym, but I'll be back with more later. Thanks for watching.